I tell you what will bring real social unrest is if a government and a parliament vote for something and see th something through that they know is going to make their constituents' lives poorer, that they know is going to damage public services. And what, what's happening at the moment, the government are using any tactic that they can, him there linking to the riots in France, to say, unless Theresa May's deal goes through, cataclysm all round. And it's not true because there are other things that Parliament can do. And what's been gratifying and good about this week is Parliament is asserting itself and I think will actually force different solutions to what is becoming a crisis for the country. We're, we're talking a lot about changing minds, about whether it's still possible to change your minds. And Jenny, you were in favour of the Alistair route out, the people's vote, but you're not anymore. Now, what, what stopped that? No, it's more nuanced than that. Originally, I thought a people's vote was a good idea. Then, as I began to realise that opinion wasn't shifting in favour of Remain, which I think is the sensible solution, I thought, OK, the country needs to compromise and we need to come together and we probably need to accept the government's deal. Then we get the government's deal and at the same time it becomes apparent that the Brexiteers have no intention of compromising on any anything. There's no point in Remainers saying we'll back May's deal when the hardline Brexiteers are busy blowing it up in Parliament. We've reached a situation where Parliament cannot compromise. There is nothing on the table that they agree on. So I think it becomes evident that we probably will have to put it back to the people. The big question that I now have, though, is that all along Remainers have assumed that leaving is so disastrous for the economy, as all economists, all predictions tell us, that naturally people will change their minds. But they haven't, because leaving has become a faith, remaining is a faith, people aren't changing their minds, and there's a very real possibility, if we have no deal on the ballot paper, that people might vote for it. You, 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 it you, think, you, you think his gamble is, is wrong here, I mean, wrong in terms of whether it will give us a different outcome, Matthew, right? You think this yeah, would Yeah, I be... mean, there's certainly no guarantee that Remain would win a second referendum, and I think if you, if you look at how Leavers and Remainers are navigating this this very volatile period, what's interesting is everybody's locked onto this idea that it's ultimately all about economic costs and benefits. And it's quite clear that, particularly on the Leave side, uh, they're having a very different conversation. And it isn't just about GDP, it isn't about the national economy. And we've got 20 years of research on how people think about Europe. And it's all about identity, community, borders, security. So Jenny's right when she says it's a faith now. Well, I'm surprised, to be frank, at the response of um, Remainers over the last two years because there just seems to be a lack of self-reflection on what went wrong in 2016. What's the new narrative? What's the new conversation? What's the new offer? The reason levers are not really budging, there's been a one or two point shift but nothing major, is because we're having the same conversation mm. and we're just saying well here's some economic doom and gloom, take this. And of course they're not going to change their minds because it's the fourth or fifth based election organised around fear. Can mm. I ask you really honestly, yeah. do you think you have become more entrenched as a Remainer in the last two years? I mean are you, when you hear Matthew's point... I, well I as an individual, yes. I as an individual have been more, become if anything more convinced that we are taking Convinced the wrong entrenched. course, right? I am, yes. However, I don't buy this idea that people, both directions, by the way, aren't changing their minds. I think we sort of look at this debate as though 17.4 million, million people feel betrayed. Some of them have changed their minds. Some of the people who voted Remain have changed their minds. I met one the other day. Not I met day. Not very day. few. And also this idea that there isn't a shift, there's now a very, very clear majority for people saying that they think they should have the final say. Now, I think on that, and by the way, I would not be at all complacent about the debate, because I think we're living in very, very volatile times. But, but, the Matthew's, point point is, was, though, but Matthew's point was more interesting, which was that you have failed, actually, to have heard what people were talking about. No, I, listen, I hear it. And I, and I, but the campaign is the People's Vote campaign. It's trying to get a referendum on the outcome of these negotiations. That's what it's all been about. That's why we were just saying, watching Liz Truss with her black pudding, it's a bit weird, the politicians all going around the country today when their sole target is the MPs. Our target has been the MPs. Our target has been the Labour Party, trying to get them to a different position. Jenny. When we Actually, get, if we do get a referendum, completely right, the campaign has to be totally different to what it was last time. Jenny. Um, it's actually disingenuous to say that the referendum campaign is simply about getting a people's vote. It is led and run, understandably, by people who think that Brexit is a terrible mistake and we must reverse it. And the point is that absolutely no effort so far has gone into saying to people anything other than 
You were mistaken. Well, that's your, not lives, true. your lives are rubbish, and they're going to be even worse if we leave. And as Matthew says, you're talking that, cartoons is yet. That, is, that is no, that's totally you're talking inadequate. Cartoons. When I talk to people who say that they voted leave, they, as Matthew says, talk in completely different terms. They talk about sovereignty, about community, Some about of them independence. Do. The way you talk about people, Alistair, like, I don't all, interrupt you. So well, I'm just could, no, you no, shut I'm challenging. Okay, shut I'm up. challenging. Well, 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 I won't because you're talking nonsense. No, you're talking about sovereignty. Can I say that is exactly? The kind of attitude, people, Alistair, people. That is exactly the kind of attitude, I'm that sorry. kind of Shh. arrogance, right. which is which is what is going to destroy the Remain campaign. If you simply turn to people who have a slightly different view from your own and have a different experience from no, your I'm own and tell you them can't that this is exactly what's everybody. happening now. This if exactly I can just come in, this is exactly are, what's happened now but with are, the Norway I'm option I'm talking, and the People's I'm Vote option. You two could be on the same side, but I'm you're not. I'm talking about the conversations that I've had with people. So don't tell me that they are nonsense. I'm not saying they're nonsense. I'm saying you talking. Alistair, could you? Shut up and let me talk. Okay, but look, you Thanks. keep saying Go. people have Jenny, all the Just finish the point, then I want to bring Matthew in. Go. It's a simple point. The point is that we, people are talking across one another, and the conversations that Remainers are having with Leavers. They have completely different priorities. I have different priorities from the leavers around me that I meet. And different things matter to them, which is why I fear that because we're talking at cross purposes, right. no one is going to change their minds. So there are two time. conversations going well, on, I think, basically. I think, so my, I mean, with a strategy type hat on, my question to Remainers is, you know, look at all the time that I think has been wasted in that that vote in 2016 was a clear demand for a change of the economic, uh, social and political, well, set po political settlement. What have we actually said to those voters? Why does London still get so much and other regions don't get as much? What are we doing about coastal communities? What are we doing about northern okay, Matthew, failing industrial communities? Can I ask you something? If what you, you say that, if you say no, 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 I what want to say, What you said to if let, uh, what would you say to a voter in Mansfield that got screwed over by globalisation, hasn't seen an increase in their standard of living, mm. wages have stagnated, and what you're saying to them effectively is? You're now going to have a bit more economic pain because you've just asked for. Well, a he's saying bit don't make people poorer. But no, my no, question no, to no, you is, wait a sec, my how do you Matthew. Mind? My is question to you is, why isn't it important for Brexiteers to tell people that actually the economics of this do matter, well, instead they, of saying it? it you know, they, they want to believe that. in sovereignty. They do say that as well. You see, I think we're, I think we're oversimplifying both sides of the argument. So, look, I go to Burnley. I'll be there tomorrow to watch a football team. I see people like your Mansfield people all the time. And what you have to, what I say to them is I completely understand why you voted Leave. I totally understand why you think the political class have let you down. I totally understand why you think the economy doesn't work for you. This Brexit is going to make it worse. And we have to make that argument because I believe it to okay. be true. Well, I would say that we've had about 10 to 12 studies of why we're here. And they all tell a remarkably consistent story, which is that a large a majority of voters want to see reform of freedom of movement and a restoration sure. of sovereignty. But now, no, no deal currently on the table delivers a, a meaningful reply to those two core Correct. drivers. I want to bring us onto the columns now, because there's a couple that. that talk about um, Brexit in particular. Before we do, a, a, a prediction from you, Jenny, next week, do you think that this vote is going to be pushed back? Are you expecting her still to be in the job this time next week? What would you give us? I think all the early predictions about Theresa May's demise have often been proved to be wrong, and it seems to me that the Tory party isn't united, as it usually isn't, behind any alternative candidate. I think it's highly likely that Mrs May next week will say to the country, if she's defeated in Parliament on Tuesday night, she will say, as, as everyone predicts, she will say, I'm going to take my deal, which is the only thing which I believe delivers Brexit, over your heads to the country. Do you want my deal? or do you want to remain? And if she offered the people that choice, she might mop up all the Leave votes on her side. And there, would be a, and there would be a clear choice which was offered to the people. But actually, it seems to me very likely that now that, that, now, that, now that Parliament cannot make up, up its mind about anything, that it's highly probable that we will end up with a second referendum. Uh, and Matthew, can I ask you for numbers? Mm. I mean, a part of it is in, you know, if she's going to lose this vote, how mm. many she loses yeah. by. Do you think between 40, 50, she can still stay, and 80 to 100, she has to go, or how well, would you Well, I mean, looking at the latest numbers, you've got about 104, 105 MPs saying that they're going to definitely vote, vote this down. I think those kinds of numbers would make it very difficult. I mean, there are two issues. One is whether May herself decides, I've tried, I've, I've, I've had enough, I'm going. But the other is actually whether, you know, the men in grey suits walk in from the Cabinet and yeah. say, you know, this is it, the authority's gone. 
Let's bring in Jonathan Friedland's uh, piece in The Guardian tomorrow. He, he's talking about crunch time for Labour. Hollow talk will no longer do. Cake and eat it. Unicorn impossibilism, uh, this is his quote, is no less dishonest when it comes with a red rosette on its lapel. Essentially, um, picking up on the Corbyn interview that was in The Guardian today, um, d does Labour have to get off the fence or have they played a blinder here? Well, the country's at a moment, of, I think, of, of considerable peril and leaders have to lead. And there has to be clarity, I think, very quickly after the vote about what Labour seriously wants the country to do. So I understand this step-by-step -step approach. Call for election, unlikely to get it. But then the question does become, will they then campaign for a people's vote as the only possible way of breaking this, this impasse? And I agree with Jenny, by the way, that Theresa May may be the person who brings this forward. But I think it would be, here's me as a Remainer, I think it would be incredibly disenfranchising if the choice actually was just Remain and her deal, her deal having been comprehensively rejected by Parliament. Yes. It's also a very... And also, no deal is not hard Brexit. <laughs> Jenny, Lars, what do you? I think it would be incredibly irresponsible of anyone in Parliament to agree that no deal should be on the ballot I'm not saying paper. no deal should be. I'm talking about Boris Johnson defining what he means by hard Brexit. So you're well, just we waiting shouldn't, for we shouldn't that. Have, we shouldn't have a hard Brexit on the ballot paper. It should be either May's deal or remain. And that is because well, there, be there, is, that, there, is there is no majority in Parliament for no deal because parliamentarians know how absolutely disastrous I it agree, would be. But no it deal would ruin people's Brexit. lives for generations. 